Mangbetu people have swollen heads through binding and look similar to the heads of Amana statues. Is there a connection between the two? This is a question about head binding and, uh, and cranial deformation. And if you look in different societies all over the world, you'll see different variations of this. When the question is asked, is there a connection between the two? We have to ask ourselves, connection in what way? Is there a common set of cultural values or aesthetics that value this? Uh, how widespread would one want to see a custom or a trait before one wanted to say there was some common cultural basis? When you look at the implements, the stone tools and the pottery from the western desert of Egypt, uh, that date to between, say, the eight and 6,000 uh, B.C. period, uh, before you have pre-dynastic Egypt. When you look at these things, and then you look at the pre-dynastic toolkits and the pottery, there's no question that people moved in out of the Sahara Desert into the Nile Valley. There's no question that there's a commonality. Did those Saharan people move anyplace else? Do we have any evidence? Yes, we have some evidence that things that they manipulated became incorporated in other places. Uh, uh, and so ideas do travel. Sometimes they travel uh, complete and intact, and sometimes they don't. I can't comment whether this sort of singular custom amongst this particular group of people uh, has anything to do with Armana specifically. If it had been the case that throughout all of Egyptian history, people had been you know, binding their heads and creating this, I might be more prone to say that, yeah, well, maybe there's some deep-rooted idea that survived in different places. Maybe it goes back to the Sahara. I don't have that kind of evidence. So I would, my, my tendency would be to say that, no, the specific uh, uh, practices at Armana, the specifically at Armana, are probably not connected to these. Some people have said that the mummies from the Valley of the Kings have similar facial features to the Maasai Mora. Is this true and where are the mummies now? Uh, in general, I would make the argument that many of the mummies from uh, uh, Egypt and Upper Egypt have a general set of facial characteristics which can be called elongated African. They, they are Somali-like. They, uh, they, they come from, uh, 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 because they're descendants of people from a hot, dry climate, they have this sort of elongated face that one sees in some living Africans. One can also note that the limb ratios, the limb proportions of Egyptians uh, are tropical. They have a tropical body plan. They do not have a northern European body plan or a Siberian body plan. They do have a tropical body plan. Uh, generally, you see people with narrow faces and noses in Africa uh, in the circum-Saharan regions or in the Sahara, bordering the Sahara. That's generally where you see them. Uh, in the f deep forest belt, you see people with other kinds of, of physical traits. They tend to have a, a broader face.